The Voigt Snyder propeller is one of the most accurate and responsive propulsion systems. The first variant was made all the way back in the 1930s, and it became quickly adapted for a system that involves both propulsion and steering. It is composed of multiple blades which can individually change angle of attack, but there's also the magnitude of the thrust which can be determined by the rotational speed of the rotor. The main comparative advantage is that it does not need to be reversed, so it can operate at full constant speed. It is also typically connected to the main engine through a turbo hydrodynamic coupling, and this allows it to make full use of the diesel engine output speed, even when the prop is subjected to different loads. This means that the voice netter has a very fast response time and can reduce rolling of the ship. Today, new variants of the voice netter propeller integrates electric motors, more specifically a permanent magnet synchronous motor. And these types of motors are known to maintain a constant speed, and they are very efficient. This also eliminates the drivetrain from the main diesel engine, and it gets rid of the extra coupling and gearing. One thing to keep in mind about all this is that the Voith Snyder propeller is actually manufactured by the Voith Group, and there are different advanced cycle rotor designs out there. One of these other designs actually stems from ABB Marine, and one of their main objectives with this design is to achieve a greater speed for cruising. Inspired by a whale's tail, a large wheel rotates and vertical blades move in a tricordial path. They base this design in computational fluid dynamics, and they optimize hydrodynamic performance without prototyping, similar to how some 3D printed aerospace engines are designed today. The main advantage is that you don't have to build expensive prototypes time and time again, and this has allowed the company to come out with a pretty refined prototype. So instead of gearing, each blade has its own responsive electric motor, and these motors are constantly adjusting in the blade angle of attack to achieve 80% efficiency. This allows the prototype to achieve up to 18 knots, which is pretty fast for this type of cycle rotor, yet it can still maneuver when it has to. Units will range from 1 to 4 megawatts, with applications ranging from ferries to small cargo ships. So the cycle rotor is definitely going towards electrification for more accuracy, speed, and control, but it's not a universal fit for everything out there because it's more expensive and complex complex. So it's not going to go on your sailboat and replace your conventional propeller, but it could be used in something like a tugboat or a science vessel where you need that ultra precise response time. When it comes to aerial applications, it's also a little bit complex as well because once again, it does kind of depend on the application. One of the main challenges of an aerial cycle rotor is the extra weight and moving parts. Another problem is that the multiple lifting surfaces can cause a lack of efficiency. That's why it's essential to once again utilize computational fluid dynamics to streamline the design and to eliminate some of the prototyping costs. Cyclotech has revealed a very impressive craft titled the Blackbird. And this utilizes six cycle rotors, four on each corner with two positioned at the middle of the vehicle. This gives a 360 degrees thrust vectoring without any tilting of the aircraft. And this allows the Blackbird to have some of the greatest maneuverability when it comes to electric VTOLs. The cycle rotor is very similar to the Dynafin, where it utilizes multiple blades that rotate around a central axis, generating thrust through a combination of airflow and change in pitch angle. This allows the craft to go forward, backward, sideways, and even mid-air brake without tilting or banking the aircraft. The downside is, is that it's not going to obtain a similar range to a hybrid electric VTOL or hydrogen electric platform. And Joby Aviation has a vehicle which can actually fly over 500 miles. And that's simply because it maximizes its propeller propulsion system through a tilt rotor design. And the problem with the cycle rotor is that it cannot maximize one direction. It's a multi-directional drive. And it's definitely a better vehicle for tighter areas or even lifting loads. But there are also hybrid designs out there which kind of utilize the best of conventional propeller driven systems with cycle rotor stabilization. One excellent example of this is the Astria by Pitch Aeronautics. It only has one cycle rotor for lateral control, and this means it gives the craft extra maneuverability without tilting. And that's a really good trait because a typical drone would need thrust vectoring or some type of gyroscopic control to have the stability. The drone's able to carry a multi-tool for repair or even a sensor at the end. And applications can range from wind turbine structural inspections to utility pole repair. So the cycle rotor is not necessarily an over complex propulsion system. 
and it can be utilized in hybrid applications. It also depends on what you're using it for. It won't replace every conventional propeller out there, but it will be essential for both aerial and marine applications for many years to come. More importantly, I would like to know what you think, so please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.